gospel and they do so in obedience to the Savior Jesus Christ just listen men and women men and women of Liverpool just listen to what Jesus Christ commanded his followers this is what we live under Jesus commanded saying thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to raise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. This includes Britain. This includes England. And it says it behoved Christ to suffer. Or men and women, it was necessary. It was necessary for Christ to suffer. The only way for you to have your sins taken away, the only way for you to escape the lake of fire is through trusting in the one who suffered, bled and died upon the cross. It was necessary also for Christ to suffer and raise again from the dead on the third day because it's foretold. It was foretold by the prophets. This is the way that God was going to save and redeem mankind to himself. It was always going to be that way. And Christ came. Christ came in fulfillment to the will of God in fulfillment to the prophets and he came to suffer and to bleed and to die upon a cross to bear our sins to become sin on our behalf Jesus rose again from the dead so that we can be justified so that we can be made righteous in the eyes of God men and women 
of Liverpool. And he says, And repentance for the remission of sins is to be preached to all nations. And that's what we preach. You see, God, God commands men everywhere to repent because he's fixed a day which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man that he has ordained. That man is Jesus. So we preach repentance. To repent means to change your mind. Do you realize that men and women of Liverpool, that you want to change your mind about living a life of unbelief, of living a life of indifference, about living a life of lethargy. Turn to God and believe in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And turn to God and turn your back on sin. Just let me put this to you. How do you live today? Do you live for self and self-gratification? Or are you living for God? Are you living to please God? How are you living? You know, there are few people here today who I believe are living for God. But the mass majority of men and women in Liverpool today are living for self. Are living to gratify yourself, gratify your flesh through your lusts. The lust that you have, lusting for, for more money, lusting for more things, lusting for more property, lusting for better players for your club. But God commands you to repent, to change your mind, to turn to Him and put your trust in His Son. And it's only when you do that, men and women, it's only when you do that are your sins forgiven. It's only when you repent are you pardoned. You need to repent. You need to repent. You need to change your mind about your lifestyle and trust in Jesus. Stop holding on to your sin. Stop holding on to the pleasure of that sin. Because it's taking you to hell. It says here in the book of Hebrews, men and women of Liverpool, it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Hallelujah. As a Christian, I love this verse. I love the fact that when Christ comes, he's coming uh, not in reference to sin, because he did that the first time, but he's coming unto salvation. He's coming to take his people to be with him in his heavenly kingdom for all of eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you look for him? Do you look for him? Are you waiting for the coming of Christ from the clouds? Are you waiting for him to come and take you into the everlasting kingdom? Away from this world of ignorance and sin and darkness and death? Hallelujah. But it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. This is good news, men and women of Liverpool. This is good news. That Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, He bore the sin of many on the cross. He denied Himself. He laid His life down. And He gave His life willfully and manfully and freely upon a cross to save a sinner like you. Now that's why Christ Jesus came into the world, men and women of Liverpool. Have any of you ever wondered why was Jesus born? Why was Jesus born? Why was he born into this world through the Virgin Mary? Have you ever wondered? 
Well, the Bible, men and women of Liverpool, it makes it abundantly clear why Jesus came into the world. The Bible says this, it is a trustworthy statement, worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world. Why? To save sinners. Always remember that. This is why Christ Jesus, this is why he left his throne. This is why he came into this world. He came to save sinners. Yes. And in saving sinners, he did it by laying down his own life and shedding his precious blood so that you can have your sins taken away, that you can have your conscience cleared. Every single one of you who isn't a Christian has a guilty conscience because you know within yourself that you have sinned against the Holy God. And one day you're going to die, yes, one day you're going to die and meet God. Stand before a holy, righteous God and give an accounting of your life. A God who knows every secret thing. Yes, at Christ appearing, he's going to judge the living and the dead. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. So sin separates you from God. Christ Jesus came to save sinners when he came 2,000 years ago by laying his life down and raising up again from the dead. But your sin, it separates you from God. And it's you that is creating the barrier between you and God. This is what you are doing, men and women of Liverpool. This is what you have done. This is what you are doing by having your back to God and saying to yourself, I'm going to live life my way. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to live for the pleasures of sin. You are creating a barrier between you and God. The Bible says, the hand of the Lord is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you that he cannot hear you. No matter how hard you try, God will not hear your prayers. Because your face is towards hell and your back is towards God. And you are the one creating the barrier between you and God. Your sins separate you from God. And what is sin, men and women? It says in a child's Christian song, S for sin, a very bad thing. That's what sin is. Sin is a very bad thing. It is an offense to God. It's to violate his holy moral law. And the Bible reveals that you have sinned against the holy God in the things that you've said, thought, and done. And the living God Hello, sees YouTube. the intent of your heart. And this guy, he's just waffling so yeah. God sees <laughs> the very intent of your heart. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, says this. It says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, no idolaters, no adulterers, no homosexuals, no sodomites, no thieves, no covetous, you are the no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's what it says in the Holy Bible. How many of you here today want to inherit the kingdom of God, guys? Do you want to go to 
hell when you die or heaven when you die? You want to go to hell too, so, sir? Well, all you have to do to go to hell is just continue, continue as you're going. You don't have to do anything else, just continue as you are doing. As it says here on this banner, without Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell. You will burn in the lake of fire. So all you have to do is just ignore God, continue as you're doing, and you'll be judged when you die, and you'll be cast into the lake of fire. And every single person who says, I would rather go to hell, is behaving very foolishly. Because nobody, nobody really wants to go to hell. Not even the devil wants to go to hell. Not even the demons want to go to hell. But they're going there based on their rebellion and rejection of God. And that's why hell was created, men and women of Liverpool. Hell was created for the devil and the demons who rebelled against God, who've been kicked out of heaven and who will spend eternity in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. And all you have to do to end up in hell is to continue going the way you're going. That's all you have to do. Just continue on. Just coast on. Just continue on living for self and self-gratification and when you die you will be judged by God and you'll be cast into the lake of fire but this is what it says in the Holy Bible it says know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God be not deceived neither fornicators fornicators a fornicator is somebody who engages in sex outside of marriage. Sex outside of marriage. Fornication. Such individuals who engage in premarital sex, sex outside of marriage, looking at pornography, masturbation and things like this, you live that way, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, God, He is a God who had created sex for procreation and for our good, for our enjoyment. But He created it to be in the confines of a marriage relationship. A marriage relationship, men and women, between a man and a woman. Not a man and a man, not a woman and a woman but between a man and a woman who are married. You see, God created marriage. God instituted marriage. And it's a union between a man and a woman. But sex outside of marriage is sin. I don't know, let's go. Now your community, your family, your community may think it's okay for you to sleep with your girlfriend, for you to sleep with your boyfriend. Some of your parents might even let you use their home to engage in sex outside of marriage. But in the eyes of God, this is sin. It's serious sin. It says, no idolaters, those who worship idols. Idols represent false gods. Do you want to know which god, which idol is most worshipped in Liverpool? Liverpool Football Club. Liverpool Football Club is a great idol in the lives of the men and women of this city and Everton too. It's just Liverpool is the most famous of the two clubs, isn't it? But it's a big idol, it's a 
great idol in people's lives. Let me ask you a question. What's more important to you, men and women of Liverpool? Liverpool Football Club or Jesus Christ? What's more important to you, men and women of Liverpool? Your football team or God? Your football manager or the Bible? What comes first in your life? What's more important? Because that reveals, that reveals what is the God in your life. What's more important to you, young man? Everton Football Club or God? Everton Football Club is more important to you than God. It's a God in your life, it's an idol in your life. The Bible says that idolaters shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is what the Holy Bible says. Worshipping false gods is sin. How many of you put money before God? How many people in Liverpool love money? You love your business, you love your career. How many of you put your families, your relationships before God? They are more important to you than God. They come first in your life. These are idols in your life. Yes, Lord. These are gods in your life. And God, he calls out to you to repent. And believe in his son, Jesus Christ, who we raised from the dead. There's many gods believed on in the world, but there's only one true and living God. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Islam is not a real God. It's a false God and an idol. And Muhammad is a false prophet. There are many gods within Hinduism, millions of them. All of them are dead. They can't hear, they can't speak, they can't walk, they can't do anything. They are dead, dead idols. All the gods of paganism, they're all dead idols who can't see, who can't hear. But it's the living God. He is your maker. Jesus Christ. He is the one that we have been created through. And when you die, you're going to stand before the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. There's no other God you're going to stand before. So if you are a pagan, a Hindu or a Muslim, God calls out to you to rethink, to repent, to change your mind, to turn to God and away from idols, that you can have your sins forgiven, that you can be pardoned, that you can be right with God. It says no adulterers, no adulterers. How many men and women in Liverpool today have committed the sin of adultery? How many of you married men have gone behind your wife's back? How many of you women here today in Liverpool have gone and slept with a married man? How many of you married women have gone behind your husband's back with another man? This is serious sin in the eyes of God. It's adultery. Only bad women commit adultery. Only bad women go behind their husband's backs. He's a bad man, an evil man, a wicked man. But I have a reading here from, from Proverbs. And you young men who are here today, it would be good that you'd pay attention to what is read here in this book. Because it will teach you to stay away from the strange woman. To keep away from the woman of evil. Yes. 
there's some women out there who can drag you downhill. It says yeah. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction of the way of life to keep thee from the evil woman from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman lust not after her beauty in thy heart neither let her take thee with her eyelids for by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon the hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goes in to his neighbor's wife Whoever touches her shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he is found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whosoever commits adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that does it destroys his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou give him many gifts. The Holy Bible, men and women, the Holy Bible, the Word of God, is a light and a lamp. It instructs you in the way of life. It instructs you in the way of life in this earth. This is what you need, guys. You need the Word of God. You need the Word of God to instruct you in the way of life. Because the Word of God is a light and it's a lamp. You look at the life of a devout Christian, you see a life of victory. You see an overcomer. That's what you see. Because he submits to the instructions of God. And the instructions of this book teaches us, teaches us to watch out for a wicked woman. To watch for the adulteress who comes to, to flatter you with her tongue, who comes with her eyelids painted, yes, with her, uh, with her makeup on, with her eyelashes done, and her bleached hair and her sexual clothes, comes to seduce, comes to take you away from the right path. For by, the, for by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Yes, if you become seduced by a wicked woman, you will end up in poverty. The wicked woman is your mom! <laughs> so men and women, it's with good reason that the living God would say, do not commit adultery. It is a serious sin before God, and it's a sin which destroys your life. 
it brings disgrace and honor and dishonor. And the Bible says that adulterers shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But you know what else the Bible says, men and women of Liverpool? The Bible says, whosoever looketh at a woman to lust for her has committed adultery with her in his heart. How many of the men in Liverpool look at women and lust after them in your heart? How many of you men who are here today in Liverpool look at women on the internet and in magazines? How many of you who are here today look at pornography? Jesus said, whosoever looks at a woman to lust for her has committed adultery with her in his heart. As I said earlier, Jesus, he sees the very intent of your heart. He sees your thoughts. He sees the things you're thinking. He knows the things going on in your life. So God knows all about it, men and women of Liverpool. He knows all about your sin. He knows all about your rebellion. He knows all about your thought life. He knows every secret thing, everything that you've done, that you think others do not know about, everything you've looked at on the internet, he knows all about it. And he calls out to you to repent, to change your mind and believe in Jesus Christ. For he alone can pardon you, he alone can forgive you, he alone can bring you in to the everlasting kingdom. It says there, no homosexuals. Yes, homosexuality is sin. I know British society is beginning to accept this sin, this abomination, more and more and more day after day. But according to God in the Holy Book, He says it's sin and it's an abomination. And if you live that way, if you live a life as a homosexual, if you live the life of a sodomite, if you live the life as a, as a lesbian, if you live that lifestyle, you will die in your sins and you'll go to hell forever. You'll not inherit the kingdom of God. Mankind might accept your perversion. Hello. <laughs> Mankind might submit to your way of life and accept it, but God never will. Homosexuals, sodomites shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is what the Bible says. It's sin. It's sin. If you live a life as an idolater, if you worship a different God to the Bible, like the God of Islam, you're heading for hell. But I'll say this to the men and women of Liverpool today, many of you put Liverpool Football Club before God. Liverpool Football Club is an idol, a God in your life. Or Leeds United, or Newcastle United, or Everton, when you put these clubs before God, they are idols in your life. It's sin. You are to repent. You are to believe in the Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose again. Without Jesus, you've got no hope in heaven. If you reject Jesus, you will go to the place of the rejected. That is the unadulterated word of God. And I tell you what, I believe that Scousers would rather have me stand here and tell it straight. Tell it as it is from the book. I know I would prefer that. So yes, there's right and wrong with God. Marriage is honourable among all and the bed under farm, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's from the Holy Bible. So marriage between a man and a woman yeah? Gay marriage is not acceptable in the eyes of God. 
Gay marriage is not acceptable in the eyes of God. It's sin. It's an abomination. But marriage, marriage, which is acceptable before God, is between a man and a woman. That's what marriage is. It's a union between a man and a woman. In sex, in sex between heterosexual married couples, is acceptable to God. It's what sex was created for, and this is what is acceptable to God. But sex outside of marriage, adultery, porn watching, homosexuality, lesbianism, incest, this, this is all sin. This is all sin. Well, if I'm homophobic, I must also be pornophobic, because I'm preaching against porn as well. Fornicate arophobic. An adultery phobic, if there's such a word. But there's right and wrong with God. This is what you've got to realize, men and women. And if you live a life of sin, 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 you're going to end up in hell, hell, hell. As it says here on this side, without Jesus Christ, you will burn in the lake of fire. But we're offering you Jesus Christ. We're bringing to you Jesus Christ. We're pointing to you, pointing you to Jesus Christ as the door unto heaven, as the door unto salvation. It says no thieves. Thieves, I was in Newcastle a week ago. And what was unique about Newcastle was the amount of shoplifters that were being brought out of the shops by the police. And also, when I came out of Marks and Spencers, one guy in front of me, he went running ahead through the alarms. Steve, he had stolen things. Thieves. Thieves shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Have you stolen? How many of the men and women, how many of the men and women of Liverpool today have stolen? Put your hand away, you've stolen something. There we go, we've got a thief there going into the shop. Watch out for him. So thieves shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Thieves shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you've stolen something, you're a thief in the eyes of God. You need to repent. The Bible says you shall not steal. You shall not steal. That's that's what the Bible says, men and women in Liverpool. This is what the Holy Scriptures say. You shall not steal. Thieves shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Have you stolen your man? You have your proud of it? You think it's good that you've stolen? Stealing is sin in the eyes of God. And when you die, you will be judged by God. Judged for how you've lived. Judge for your stealing. Have you stolen? Have you told lies? The Bible says, the Bible says, you shall not bear false witness about your neighbor. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that you shall not bear false witness about your neighbor. You shall not lie about people. How many of you lied about people? The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. How many of you dishonored your mum or your dad? Do you dishonor them? Do you disobey your mum and your dad? Do you disobey them? Do you disobey them? What's that? I'm, I'm preaching the truth from God's word. Submit to the word of God, sir. Submit. You're not the word of God. You're the word of God. Men and women of Liverpool. This gentleman here says he's the word of God. What you got to tell us then, sir? If you're the word of God, what is it you've got to tell us? That's the word of God. I'm saying this is the word of God. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. 
This is the word of God. And the word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. It instructs us in the way, in the right way to live. It's a guide to us. And we can all testify to how the holy word of God, the Bible, has guided us in life and guided us away from a life of wickedness, a life of which brought depression, a life that brought anxiety into a life of happiness and peace and life. That's what we want for the men and women of Liverpool. This is what we want for you, that you would have life in Jesus. Jesus says, he who has the Son has life. He who has the, not the Son of God shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. No covetous. The covetous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you lust? You're lusting after money. You're lusting after things that don't belong to you. You're lusting after other people's wives, other people's husbands, other people's property, other people's houses and cars and things. You lust. You're lusting after women. Looking at pornography. Jesus. Jesus has made a way for you to have your sins forgiven. It's through faith in him. It's through putting your confidence, your trust in him. In what he did for you upon the cross. And through his resurrection from the dead. Says no drunkards. How many of you are going to get drunk tonight, men and women of Liverpool? How many of you are going to get wasted tonight? Well, the Bible says that drunkards shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says you should inherit. It's a sin to get drunk on alcohol. It's a sin to get intoxicated on alcohol. It's not just the, it's not just the alcoholics, not just the alcoholics who are down the pub day after day or on the street corner who are the sinners. But if you get drunk, if you get intoxicated on alcohol, you are sinning against the holy God and you'll go to hell forever. Yes, getting drunk on alcohol will send you to hell. Smoking weed and getting high will send you to hell. Getting high on cocaine will send you to hell. How many of you are going out partying tonight? Drunken parties? Night clubbing? How many of you women are going to dress in provocative clothing? Go to the nightclub and dance around to Scout's house. Yeah. Sniff a line of cocaine. Yeah. And afterwards, smoke a few joints. Is that how you're going to be living? Is that what you're doing tonight? Because you must understand that that's sin, sin, sin. And if you live a life of sin, you will go to the lake of fire and we don't want you to go to the lake of fire we don't want you to burn in hell we don't want you to be cast into hell we want you to find mercy and forgiveness and grace through Jesus Christ no you're not getting up here young man No revilers, the Bible says. No revilers. No extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And do you know what it says after that, men and women? It says, and such were some of you, but you are washed, 
but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of our, the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now we stand before you here today as men and women who have been saved by the grace of God. We used to be sinners like you. But there was a time in our life when we were drawn to the Saviour Jesus Christ. We humbled ourselves. We came to our senses. We changed our mind. And we turned to God. Repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We put our faith, our confidence in Jesus. And when we did that, men and women of Liverpool, God took away our sin. Forgive us. He washed us. He cleansed us. And made us fit for heaven. And this is exactly the message we're bringing. This is what we want the men and women of Liverpool to hear today. We want you to hear about the saving the saving message of Jesus Christ. That's what we want you to hear today. The saving message of Jesus Christ. Hello. Sure. Bear with me. Hello. So we talk. You don't mind if I keep you? Yeah, you do what you want. Um, so, what's your name, sorry? Um, well, I don't have to give you my details, do I? Um, I do only, only, when I'm, only when I'm detained. No, no, so we need to verify your name and address. Just anyone that we interact with, you see. No, no, so that's not the law. The law is I only have to give my name and address if I am detained. So. Yeah, I've worked on explaining what's, what's happened. Okay. Well, I'm happy, to, no, I'm happy to talk to you, but I'm not giving any details. Okay, that's fine. So yeah. at the moment we've got a complaint that you've basically been preaching at homophobic and racist remarks, okay? So that's what we're here for. So obviously you understand that that's, you can't do that. I'm happy to talk to you, yeah. Okay, so what have you been preaching about then? Um, well, basically, um, I've been preaching from the Bible. Yeah. Okay, so I've been preaching about all different types of things. Okay. So, do you have that all on record, do you? Yeah, I record, everything. You record everything. Yeah. Do you have a page or whatever that you, is it like live streamed or do you have a page that you put it up on? Um, well, I basically just record for my own safety, really, okay. just to guard against um, lying accusations, which okay. often can happen, or misinterpretations okay. to what I'm preaching. Okay. So, have you been preaching any, have you been speaking about any, making any homophobic remarks, any racist remarks you have you been preaching? Of course not. Well, I'm not a racist and I'm not homophobic. I'm simply here today to preach Christianity from the Holy Bible. So that's what I've been doing. Are you here with the people as well with the signs or are they... Yes, we're all together. So how long have you been here for? We've been in we've been in town today for about uh, two hours or so. Two hours. Yeah, we were preaching up there, but the bus that came there was very loud, so we came up here to preach. Okay. So. Do you just yeah. pick like a different city every so often to come to, or do you based around here? Yeah, we just I preach all around the country actually. Yeah. yeah. Hello, you're Hiya. Good, sir. Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. So, we've, obviously, people have been recording, as you are. Um, they're going to be looking at video footage that people have captured to see if any complaint is founded with footage, okay? Yeah. Um, what was your plans for the rest of the day? Because I've had quite a few people that have phoned about what you've said, and I think it's causing a bit of distress to the community at the minute. Obviously, I've not been here, so yeah. I don't know what you've said. No, yeah, but your job as well is to uh, protect freedom of expression. Yeah, to I protect that. our. Um, to protect our human rights. Yep. So, for example, in the Public Order Act, Part 3, 
A, mm -hmm. 29J and yep. 29JA protects freedom of expression. Yeah, you can express so, yourself rightly so, yeah. So I've been standing here expressing yeah. myself, preaching the Bible. If some people are offended, to be quite frank, most people are being fine walking mm -hmm. by. If there's a few people that's offended, that doesn't mean that there's an offence being committed. I of, appreciate that. You understand? But the, 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 I don't, there's no problem in regards to your freedom of expression, okay? Nobody's questioning that. Yeah. The problem is somebody's made an allegation that what you've been saying has caused them to fear due to a hate crime element, okay? That's why I'm here, okay? Not to do with your freedom of expression, okay? Yeah. In regards to whatever you're expressing, okay? Yeah. I think it's the, the topic that's caused the reason that I'm here. All oh, right. But okay? the thing is, it's like, topic is like, I'm preaching from the Bible, so... I've been preaching all sorts from the Holy Bible. Okay. Um, so if someone's offended by something I've read from Scripture, then their problem is with the Holy Bible and not with me. And it's it's not illegal to read from the Bible or preach from so the Bible I'm in sure, this land. I'm sure you're quite afraid okay with public order offences. Uh, in public order, um, the use of terms that can cause some to fear harassment, alarm or distress, okay? It's if not it, terms. Just listen, just listen. If anybody is feared harassment, alarm or distress in the words that you use, scriptures that are on display or something, that can then be constituted as a public order offence. No, That's no. what, just listen, just listen. Let me explain I, public I've let order. You answer. Can I finish then? You can continue. Go on then. That's why we're going to listen to video recordings that people have to see if that would fall under that yeah. bracket and then that would justify what oh, we're called it yeah. for. Okay. The thing is about public order, um, say Section 5 for example, mm -hmm. for somebody for somebody to, um, you know, for, for an offence to be, um, for an offence to happen, I would have to or somebody would have to use threatening or abusive words. Or intimidating. No. It's threatening or abusive in section five. In section four A, it's threatening, abusive, or insulting. And if it, if it intimidates somebody so to cause them my to la leave my language today, my language today, my language today has not been threatening. In regards to no, listen, listen, it, it doesn't, it doesn't go off, it doesn't go off what people feel. In what regards it, to a hate crime, it's the perception of that yeah, as well. That. Yes. That's what constitutes the hate crime element. Okay? Yes. Like I said, we haven't been here to hear what has been heard, yes. okay? So I can't say yeah. what's yeah. being said. But even That's why the, we're looking at video recordings. Yeah. Okay? But even with the hate crime legislation, okay, even with that, there's been, there's been a new ruling from the High Court through the Harry Miller case. Right. The College of Policing are changing their guidance and... Passing that guidance, that guidance on, on to you. We go off the guidance yes, but you've also got to go off common sense. And if you look at the ruling, as that's what you should be going off. As I'm sure you'd agree, if us use common sense in this situation, in a common sense setting, if somebody's phoned or saying they feel harassed or stress, I have to deal with that matter. Do you agree? Yeah, I have to establish that nobody yeah. is harassed or harmed or stressed from what you've been yes, saying. But what okay? happens is, that's why but what here. happens is, for an offence, for for there to be an offence of Section 4A or Section 5, okay. I would have to be guilty of using threatening, abusive, or insulting words, and that's certainly not what I'm doing. I I'm simply here yeah, preaching from the Bible. I haven't said you're guilty. Sorry. Of Even if that's not your, that's not your intention. Somebody has felt that way, and therefore they rang us. Do you understand that? Yeah, I do understand yeah, so that. Yeah. Oh no, I, un I totally understand that if you guys get a so call, if you yeah. guys get a call. We you have guys have got to go and investigate it. that. Yeah. I get so that's that. what we're yeah. trying to explain to you. Yeah. If that's not your intention, that's fine. But if someone feels that way, then who are we to say that they can't feel that yeah. way? Do you know what I mean? I'm not a response for anybody how you feel. Pardon? I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't dictate to somebody how they feel. Well, nobody people, can. People I feel don't nobody like can. police. If I, if I don't like police. That's fine. That's my feeling. It's not a problem. It's not a, yeah. it's not a crime, it's not a problem. No, but if someone, obviously in the Public Order Act, we've got 4A, which can also be read to it. Section 5, Section 4A. If someone feels that way, that's how they Those are two Public Order Acts. Who are we to dispute that? Yeah. So what, that's fine. Is that right? But my colleagues get video. So what do you base? So my colleagues, oh, so my colleagues now go to do a video to see what's been said. 
Okay. Yeah. And then we'll get to the bottom of it that way. All she was doing is explaining. She was just explaining. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. anything yeah. of have you have the yeah. That's what she did in this class. Yeah. That's literally, that's what she did. The right thing is, it's not a It's a preacher. Yeah, no, no, no place in this no. document no. is no. intimidating. No. No. There is no mention of, there is no mention of, I've just had a look, there is no mention of intimidating, there is no clause of that in section 5 of the public order, just for the record. Yeah. Are you arresting me? Yeah, yeah, just listen. No, just just tell me. I'll just put my on there. Admin. So there you have it. She uh, chose to arrest me. And uh, this is now the second time that Merseyside police have unlawfully arrested me for preaching the word of God in Liverpool City Centre. So this time they took me to St. Anne Street Custody Suite in Liverpool North. And uh, I was booked into the station and I was uh, detained in total for seven hours and released after midnight and uh, that was on the 9th of the 1st 2022 and I was released under investigation and what that means is is that the police release you and um, they, they, they will then look at the evidence uh, that they've gathered and then they'll make a decision on whether to charge you or whether to issue you with a no further action and as you can see i was issued with a no further action and i received that letter today and uh, in the letter it gives the reason for the no further action and it says there is insufficient evidence to provide a realistic prospect of conviction so let's just think about the evidence that they did have uh, they had my body worn camera which was recording during my whole time in Leeds City Centre. They had my mobile phone, which also was recording during my whole sermon. Um, they had uh, the, the statements from my accusers and video footage from one of my accusers. So even though they had all this evidence, it is still insufficient to provide a realistic prospect of conviction. The reason being is, is that I was going about my lawful business. There was no crimes being committed. But the crimes that are being committed, the offences that are being committed, surely are the lying accusations from members of the public. Now I heard their statements being read to me in the interview. And... Uh, they were blatant lies. And also, the crimes committed by the police, who've got no right whatsoever to arrest me, to put handcuffs on me, or anybody else who's going about their lawful business. But there you have it. Up and down the country and around the UK, Christian evangelists and preachers are being arrested by the police, experiencing the very things that I'm experiencing. Members of the public becoming offended by certain aspects of the Christian message. Either, either telling the police what we've said and what's offended them, or in many cases lying to the police and embellishing what we've said. And police officers turning up, and police officers so eager to put their handcuffs on us, arrest us unlawfully, take us down to the station and having us locked up. 
Now, you know, we all know that this is, you know, a terrible thing that, that Christian preachers are experiencing in our land. Uh, and, 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 you know, we, we, we want, we want this to stop. Um, we want even more liberty, um, for open air preaching in this land. But what do we do in the meantime? Well, we can pray for change. We can do all that we can to bring about change. Um, but in the meantime, and, and where the power is, is to continue to go out there into the highways and byways and preach the word of God and preach the gospel. And if God calls us to suffer these things, then 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 let his will be done. So I pray that, that this video uh, is an encouragement to you. I pray it, it helps you, it enlightens you, it shows you clearly what is happening, what's going on on the ground in regards to uh, Christian street preachers, um, how they're being treated and, and how they're being unlawfully arrested. God bless you.